Hi, Michael Bettine here for a new episode of It's Cup of Time 2022. And today I'm going to talk about something that I get a lot of questions about. And there's a lot more to this idea than I think most people realize. So the question is, what about muffling your gongs? But I want to look at two different sides of this idea. The first is muffling, and the second is dampening. And I see those as two very different ideas. Now, to me, in defining muffling, to me that would mean completely dead or mostly dead, as far as the sound. Like if you were to muffle a drum, you would just like put tape, you would put all kinds of pads on it or something so that instead of going boing, it would just go bonk. That is muffling. On the other hand, dampening. To me, dampening is a softer form of muffling. It's taking out some of the unwanted ring and or overtones of the sound. And dampening can be a gradual thing where you increase how much of the sound you stop until you actually get to muffling. So let's look at these two different ideas. So like I said, dampening is more of just a complete deadness of sound. And one way to do that, if you really want to muffle your gong, is to cover it with something. Here I have a, a large towel. We can thread it through here through the cord, let it hang on the face. I know if I play this, it's a completely dead sound. There's a little bit of ring, but it's mostly dead. And this is something I've done for various recordings where I want this as an effect as a specific type of sound. If I'm playing in a gong meditation type session, I probably wouldn't muffle a gong to this sort of extreme. But it is nice, especially if you were looking to have more of a rhythmic background and using a gong. In this case, it becomes more of a drum. And one thing you could do, you could also hit the gong, so it release the sound a bit, or, or close it off. So there is the towel in the back, which is also muffling it. If I wanted less muffling, I could just loop this over the stand so various different ways of using a towel to cover the gong and get different types of what I would call muffling deadening getting that completely dead sound. Now another way we can easily muffle, a lot of people will be like, ah, when they see me do it, just use your hands. I know some people might want to wear gloves. I never have the time to be bothered with gloves because I don't want to wear gloves when I'm playing and I don't want to have to stop and put on a glove so I can touch my gong and not get fingerprints on it. I just don't worry about it. It's a tool. So we can do this. It won't be as dead as putting something over it. So I can hold the rim, just grab the rim and hold it tightly.
advantage of this type of muffling is I can also release my grip partially, completely, to let the gong open up. cut it off again by grabbing the gong. So if you're squeamish about fingerprints, I wouldn't recommend using your bare hands, but I have sort of a hand cleaning fetish even before this whole COVID thing. As a percussionist, I'm always handling instruments, sticks and mallets, hand percussion, shakers and bells and things. So over all these years, I've just learn to keep my hands clean. So that's why I'm never afraid to touch my gongs. But just grabbing them like that. A simple way to get more of a muffled sound, a dead sort of sound. And again, we can vary the pressure. I can hold it real tight or just a bit. Same thing here on this Pice de Bronze gong. you're gone and holding it firmly, muffling. So those are the two main ways that I would muffle a gong, either with a towel, cloth, some sort of blanket or something over it to get a really dead sound or using my hand. Another way we can do it, but it, it's kind of a drastic thing, is we can take the gong and lay it on the floor on some carpet or on some foam, put it on a table on some carpet or foam. This is something I do with a lot of my small gongs, little chow gongs, little bow gongs, little opera gongs, and that is I will put them on the table on the carpeting and they are muffled that way. And I will play them like that. And it's sort of what I call my table gamelan. And it's usually eight to 10 gongs all lined up on the table in two rows, and I can play them that way, and I get very short, truncated sounds. And sometimes I can also grab the, the cord and lift the gong a bit to open up the sound or not. But that's basic muffling. Now, dampening, to me, dampening is more of a gradual type of thing, where you have a sound that's going but you want to stop it or lessen it. And this is something I do all the time, and it's become so automatic to me, I don't notice that I'm actually doing it when I'm playing. And it will dampen in a lot of different ways. One is with my hand. If I hit a gong, I can either like rub my hand across the gong. I can grab the gong. Or another way is, is taking a mallet. Let me get a second mallet here. So if I'm playing with two mallets, I obviously can't grab a gong, but... Taking the mallet and either rubbing it around the inner circle of the gong, right around the middle of the gong. Or another way is you can take the mallet and push down here to get more of a, a dampening thing. So I 
will do that sort of dampening idea. And a lot of times I'll do that same thing to some of my bell cymbals or the roto sounds or some of the uh, really heavier bells that are ringing and they'll just keep ringing and ringing. I'll just gently touch them on the edge to stop the ring. Here's a Peisty Pure Bell. So if I let it ring, so I can just cut it off, depending on how much force I put on it to just dampen it. Because like I said, a lot of these bell sounds will ring and ring. And I'm playing, and I'm standing here, and maybe I'm playing the singing bowls and such on the table in front of me, and I can still hear all this metal behind me ringing. So I'll often use a mallet to do it, or even just my finger on the edge of a cymbal. I can touch that to dampen it too. Very simple ideas there. And the same with the singing bowls and the rim bowls. I can use a mallet to touch them. Something in a padded mallet. I'm usually playing with like a marimba mallet. Let's grab one here. It's like a marimba mallet. So I can hit the bowl and dampen it. So going along with dampening the gong with a mallet, I can do the same thing with a bowl. Here's a small singing bowl. I can touch the edge with my mallet or use a finger to stop it very quickly or more of a gradual type of dampening. So Either using the mallet or using the finger, I'll dampen small instruments. Bell cymbals, rin bowls, singing bowls, bells. If they're resonating too long and I still hear them going, I will dampen them that way. I'll use, like I said, I'll often use my hand. I might use my forearm even. Especially if I've got uh, long sleeves on, so I've got, you know, instead of just bare skin, I've got cloth there, which is actually works as a better muffler than my skin, but I can do that sort of thing. Depending on where the gong's located, I can use my shoulder or my back, on my back into the gong. my shoulder, different ways like that. If the gong is below me, I can use my leg or my knee. So if I got, if I have a, a gong that's lower, I can use my leg to dampen something. And again, I could rub it around or just put push into it. And that works well if I want to stop one gong as I'm striking another one. Or I don't want both gongs playing at the same time. Another way is if I'm playing a handheld gong. Here's a small wind gong. Now, I can completely muffle it by holding it between my legs and pinching it between my legs, actually. And 
that's one way to muffle a small gong. This is a 22 inch wind gong. That works really well. If I'm playing it handheld and I don't want as drastic a muffle, I can just kind of gradually move it towards my leg. So I have different options. Even if I'm holding it between my legs, I don't have to do a real quick muffle of the sound. So these are some very basic ways of muffling a gong. Now with a smaller gong, like this small wind gong, in order to muffle it, I put a pad on the back. This is just a small cloth pad that I've cut out of a piece of cloth or an old t-shirt or something and folded over to make a pad and then using sticky tape or what they call gym floor tape to hold it on. I like to use this type of tape for various things like marking my stands and you know putting on gongs because it doesn't tend to leave a messy residue. If you use um, duct tape, gaffers tape, or masking tape, electrical tape, other things like that, over time they tend to really deteriorate and leave all the sticky glue residue on the gong or the stand and that becomes a real mess and then you have to clean it off. This will leave some residue but it's really much less and it's much easier to get off than the other ones. But I use this on the small gongs to get more of a focused note. Because without that, the, the small wind gongs really open up, and I will demonstrate that. So here's a similar one, similar size, with no dampening on it. A lot of overtones, very crashy sort of sound. But in many cases, I like to use these more as a tuned type gong. So a little pad on the back can help focus the sound. This one and we'll see what kind of difference it makes. So here's a little pad I put on the one I just played. Much more focused note. Much more like a bow gong with a boss. So here's the here's the C sharp wind gong with a pad on the back. And then here is a C-sharp bossed bow gong. Very similar character. Whereas if I took the pad off the other one, it would just open right up.
Now some other ways I have muffled gongs over the years, especially smaller gongs like this or the smaller wind gongs, six to maybe 10, 12 inch size gongs, is using different sort of clips either on this edge or if it's a flat wind gong, putting a clip here. And you can buy all sorts of clips at hardware stores. You could even use clothes pins. I've done that before, but just a small clip or two clips. And what that does is it just dampens it and keeps it from vibrating as much. So those are other ways you can dampen some small gongs. I suppose even on, on bigger wind gongs and some of the bigger gongs, you could take some of the bigger clips that are like six, eight inches real big springy clips and clip that on the gong and that will dampen it some too. It just keeps the vibrations from building up. So there we go. Muffling versus dampening and basic differences in that idea. So again, to me, muffling is completely cutting out a sound. That's completely muffled. Dampening is toning a sound down. That's dampened. And then as we are playing, if we need to dampen or muffle a gong, we have the various ideas of using our hands, using various body parts like forearm, shoulder, our back, if it's a lower gong, using our legs. And then on the smaller instruments like bowls and bells and bell cymbals, using our, our fingertips, or if it's real small, you can even grab it like a bell or pressing against it with a mallet right on the edge to stop the vibrating. There you have it. The simple ideas for muffling and dampening. And it doesn't cost you anything. It's all with materials you probably have around yourself, your mallets. And if you need to use a towel to muffle a big gong, you probably have enough towels that you can spare one to muffle a gong with. So thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on It's Cup of Time.